Good afternoon and welcome to Mr. Mickleborough's Maths World. Today we are here to talk about trigonometry, in particular the unit circle. In previous videos I've been uh, talking about our uh, equilateral triangle and our isosceles triangle. Two triangles that are going to enable us to find exact trigonometric ratios for 45 degrees 30 degrees and 60 degrees. So we rely on so Toa to come up with exact ratios for those uh, degree measures, 30, 60 and 45. Today what we're going to do is take a little bit further and see that we can, uh, by use of symmetry, we can find exact trigonometric ratios for a whole lot of other angles. Uh, and, and today we're talking about angles that are greater than 90 degrees in particular. Um, if we were to rely on other uh, identities in trigonometry, for example, double, double angle formulae, compound angle formulae, half angle formulae, we would be able to find a whole lot of other exact trigonometric ratios, but that is beyond the requirements of our course. So today I want to look at some angles, uh, perhaps in the second, third and fourth quadrant in particular. And let me take uh, uh, this one for example. I'm going to look at uh, the uh, angle 225 degrees. Now if I was to map it on what I call my daytime diagram, um, it might come to a point like about there, 225 degrees. It is 45 degrees more than 180 degrees. Okay, so it's in the third quadrant definitely. I hope you can all see that 225 degrees would be in the third quadrant. Okay, and I note it down there before I lose track of it. That's 270 around there, and that's 0 or 360 at that point there. Okay, now I can, I'm lying, what I'm trying to tell you is that I can find exact trigonometric ratios for 225 degrees. And the reason for that is that if I'm looking at the um, sine ratio, for instance, the sine of 225 degrees, really what's happening is that the sine ratio we have equated with the y coordinate. Okay? Remember sine and cos x. The sine ratio we associate with the y coordinate, cosine ratio with the x coordinate. Now it so happens that this point here, this y coordinate here, would correspond to this y coordinate here. The only thing that would be different, and it's a rather major thing to, to, to be different, is the sine. So instead of negative, uh, instead of that y coordinate there, it would be negative. Okay? You can see that the y coordinates are negative anything, uh, anywhere below the x axis. So to give this a bit more flesh, what I'd say to you is that all we do is we take from 225, 180, we get 45 degrees. So really, we can conclude from our bow tie diagram, bow tie diagram, that sine 225 is exactly equal to negative sine 45 degrees. I hope you're following that. Okay? So that's the first thing to do. We're working out the angle size between this line here and the x-axis. It's 45 degrees. All right. This, by the way, is telling us the sine ratio will be negative in this third quadrant. Alright? So once I've worked out that uh, the angle distance between there and there is 45 degrees, really all I need to do is work out what sine 45 degrees is and then determine whether it's positive or negative. It's negative. Okay, so quite simply put, sine 225 degrees will equal negative, negative, and not sine 45. Well, here's my diagram for 45 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, and that's my answer. So I've got an exact trigonometric ratio now for sine 225 degrees. Let's have a look at another one. How about um, tan? So this is EG1, example 1. Let EG2 uh, be tan 300 degrees. All right? Tan 300 degrees. Well, that's going to map out to around there, isn't it? 270, 
had a bit more on. What's this angle size in here? It'll be 60 degrees. Because that's 300 to there, another 60 to go before I complete the revolution, which is 360 degrees. So really, when I'm considering tan 300 degrees, I'm interested in tan 60 degrees. So I go to my diagram of 60 degrees in it. There it is there. Opposite, over, adjacent. So it's root 3 on 1, otherwise known as root 3. Now, the only other thing I've got to worry about is whether it's positive or negative. All stations to central is telling me that the tan ratio is negative there. So it's negative root 3 and on 1. One more example. How about um, EG3? EG3. We haven't done a cosine yet. Uh, how about um, cosine 12? Uh, let me say 120 degrees. <coughs> now, 120 degrees might be represented on our diagram by that angle there. So I'm really considering, by the way, this uh, triangle here. I'm tracing it out. And I want to find the cosine ratio of that triangle. Well, we notice that inside here would be 60 degrees. And so, really, the idea is this that my x coordinate for 60 degrees is the same as my x coordinate for 120 degrees, except for 120 degrees it is negative, isn't it? Yeah. So cosine, let's remember this, the cosine we associate with the x coordinate, x coordinates are negative anywhere to the left of the y axis. Okay, so I can note this, um, that that's going to equal negative cosine 60 degrees. And that is equal to, well, here's the 60 degree diagram. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos 60 is a half. Cos uh, 120 will be negative a half. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, now, one final example, that was EG3. I'm running out of room here, sadly. Uh, EG4. One final example, uh, in fact, two final examples. I'm going to do sine uh, 390 degrees. Okay, we're going to have trigonometric ratios of any size angle. Now all 390 degrees is indicating that I'm going through a revolution and continuing for another 30 degrees. Okay? So really I'm interested in sine 30 degrees. That is a fact. Sine 390 degrees, you can consult your calculator of course, is going to equal sine 30 degrees. Both are positive. Both are positive. And that's going to equal a half. Okay? I go to my 30 degree diagram, here we go, opposite over hypotenuse is a half. And the other thing I should be able to do, e.g. 5, just very briefly, is this. Uh, tan, for example, tan negative uh, 150. Now negative degrees, all it's indicating is travel in the clockwise direction. So you're starting there, of course, all angle measurements start from the x-axis in the first quadrant, first and third quadrant, and, but a negative angle is simply indicating you are moving clockwise, wise, 150 degrees. That means, if I'm starting here, going over here, that angle there is equal to 30 degrees. So that's equal to 10, 30 degrees, and what is more, it is positive tan 30 degrees because all stations of two central to me, the tan ratio is positive in that quadrant. So, long story short, tan one, uh, negative 150 degrees is equal to tan 30. And tan 30, there's 30, opposite over adjacent is 1 over the square root of 3. So, just recapping up there, well, one thing to be careful of when you're working with your bow ties, you're always looking at the angle measure between that line there or that line there. I don't have a word for it. Well, it's a hypotenuse actually in each case, as it turns out. 
you're, you're working with the angle between the hypotenuse and the x-axis in every time. You're never working with, for example, that angle there and the y-axis. Okay? So we might end the video right there.